Ivan's too. Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome everyone here to our council meeting on May 14th at one o'clock is the time and I'll call the meeting to order. Uh, I'll first read the land acknowledgement. We respectfully, we respectfully acknowledge that the township of Acidale Norwood is located on the Treaty 20 Mississauga Territory and the traditional territory of the Mississauga and Chippewa Nations, collectively known as the Williams Treaty's First Nations, which include Kirk Lake, Hiawatha, Alterville, Scugog Island, Rama, Beausoleil, and Georgina Island First Nations. The Township of Asphodel Norwood respectfully acknowledges that the Williams Treaty First Nations are the stewards and caretakers of these lands and waters in perpetuity, and that they continue to maintain these responsibilities to ensure their health and integrity for generations to come. I will now invite everyone to pause for a moment of silent reflection and prepare for the council meeting ahead of us as a gesture of respect and contemplation. I will now ask members to declare any direct or indirect pecuniary interest before this council meeting. Seeing no hands, I will move for approval of the agenda. Um, um, thank you, as amended. Um, as amended? Yes, with the uh, change being that the BAC meeting is scheduled for June 4th at 2 p.m. at the Norwich Hall Town Hall, not June 7th, if it can be requested in that. Thank you. Okay, seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burt. Yeah. All in favor? Yeah, motion's carried. Approval of the agenda. I'm looking for a motion to approve today's. Pardon me? Approval of the minutes. Yeah, we just did it there. We did that. Yeah, it's not okay, sorry. It's okay. I'm now looking for approval of the minutes as I'm looking for a motion to adopt the regular minutes of April 23rd as presented or amended. As presented. As presented, Councillor Walsh. Seconder, Deputy Mayor Burt. All in favor? Motions carried. Do we have any business arising from the minutes? Okay. No. Moving along to correspondence on to our consent agenda, sorry. Moving along to the consent agenda, we have the correspondence C1 through C15. Do we have someone to approve as circulated or amended? Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird, yes. with comment. I think I've got yours down. Uh, and Councillor Hodgegreaves. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird, C2 and C10. C2 and C10. Okay. I can go ahead. Yes. Else? Okay. Um, C2 and C10, they, they do somewhat go together on the, the Bill 185. So I just want to make a comment of, from both Watson and Associates in the county. Um, for keeping us updated on that, there's there's potentially a lot of a lot of changes. I'm not a planner, and I don't pretend to understand it all. But um, it's uh, it's good to to keep um, keep informed on that. And I guess this question is going to to, to Alan. Um, is there any timeline on when this is looking at coming through, or any idea? Um, strictly. Things we've heard is that they wanted to try to get this passed before the, the end of this session. Okay. But that's whether that's going to happen or not, that's a whole other conversation. Okay. Uh, Councillor Ward? Um, yeah, yes, I, I'm uh, just a, a for C1. I don't know if we're finished. Oh, no, I'm done. I, that yeah. was my question. I, I just think uh, something on C1, which is the uh, Orca. Uh, yeah, the Orca, the Ontario um, Economy Regional Conservation Authority. Um, lots of reading in that sure. annual report. And I did go on and look at, they have the regulated area mapping. And I don't know if anyone's gone in to look at it. It's all new, the way that they um, they map the floodplains. So it's quite interesting. You can just push your um, property number in, it comes up and it will show the, the mapping that ORCA does, which is, um, it, it is a new model. So it was interesting if anyone's interested in looking at that. Uh, Councillor Walsh. Yeah, uh, just a comment on C2, if I can, Mary. 
Yes. Uh, basically, to echo Deputy Mayor Burke, it's just, you know, watch this. So it's just a great update. Certainly, this bill is continual involvement. And same comment as Deputy Mayor Burke, we're not planners. So any additional help we can get, but I'm trying to understand how this all works is fantastic. And if I may um, come in on C4. Yes. Uh, regarding the impact. Um, and actually, Alan already answered my question. So there's no new assessment date as of yet. Uh, that really is not um, just for everybody's interest. It's not impacts decision. That's ultimately the provincial government to push the button on that. And uh, unfortunately, we just we still wait. Uh, as exactly. Can. It's a it's a lot like the Bill 185. Until they iron it all out, we're not going to really know the answers. Um, everybody was in favor of that motion. Yes. We have no delegations with us today, so we'll move along to staff and committee reports. Kyle Peacock, uh, Wastewater Operations Manager. Yeah, the floor, sir. All right, good afternoon. Okay, for you, Mayor, it's that time of year again. So uh, <clears throat> this uh, reports regarding the risk assessment and management review um, for the Norwood and Trempeview um, estates, drinking water systems. Um, this is an annual thing. So uh, the we're looking for the council, the tash, township of Ashville, Norwood, to receive this report regarding the annual management review and risk assessment for the Norwood drinking water system and Trempeview Estates distri distribution systems for information. Uh, so a bit of background um, underneath our QMS, our, our drinking water what, drinking water quality management standard. Um, this is a requirement. So every year, um, upper management sits down, um, takes a look at uh, the previous year's um, operations. Um, there's a list of elements here. I won't go through um, each and every one of them, but um, as you can see, there's quite a list of things that we go through, um, make recommendations, uh, look at planning for the next year. Uh, so that's the management review portion. Another portion of this report covers the risk assessment. So every 12 months, we're <clears throat> required to at least take a look and review those risk assessment tables, identify whether there's been any new risks that have uh, come to light and how we uh, are going to look to mitigate those risks. Um, so I've attached uh, to the report was the management review with all the um, information in that and the two uh, risk assessments. Uh, no real changes to the risk assessment this year. Um, nothing really new has popped up that um, we didn't cover off last year. Uh, this was just the 12-month review of that. Every 36 months, we're required to go back over the thing as, as a whole and uh, take a, a more wholesome look at it. Um, and um, the management review um, action items and whatnot are stipulated in that report. Uh, so if there's any questions, I'd take them now. Any questions of Kyle? Uh, Councilor Walsh? Gotta find it. <laughs> <laughs> it was regarding if we had a water shortage that we would put a process in place to manage how we done that. I'm just trying to understand just what that kind of looks like. Uh, within the risk assessment tables? Yeah. Um, let's find it here. Sorry, Kyle. Yeah, let me pop that up. Are you referring to uh, the Norwood system? Yes. Yeah, so this Norwood system water supply shortfall. Yeah, yeah. So, so we that... would activate the emergency management procedure. So you just kind of like me what that looks like. Well, a data would have to be determined at the time. Okay. Yeah, based on the situation. Um, we did do a scenario this year um, where we kind of, we simulated that. So as far as getting messaging out, bottled water availability, um, putting, um, putting things in place, you know, to limit water usage to basically bare minimum. Um, part of our water usage bylaw that we brought last year and had passed was actually kind of came from that. So, okay. yeah, it would be dependent on the situation. If there's limited water, no water. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird. Uh, thank you. Through you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to ask about um, the Trentley Estates report, and I'm referring to it'd be one page 145 in the agenda. I'm not sure what page on your report. Um, you mentioned about um, the water meters there are starting to fail in the yeah. al allocate budget. Um, I would assume those water meters are quite an age at this point. Yeah, they're and, the originals, yeah. Yeah, and so <clears throat> I have two questions. So that was the first one. Um, cost of those and, and what does that rollout look like? And then under 2.13 staff suggestions, um, possibility of investigating Trent Hills assuming operations. Yeah. I don't remember seeing that. So I just, those are the two questions I had. So. Yeah. So regarding the water meters, yeah. we've seen a few fail in the last um, year. Okay. Um, 
I suspect they're going to kind of systematically start to go quicker here now. Now that they've started to go, it's the batteries is the issue. Okay. And you cannot buy parts for those meters anymore. They've been, of course, so um, we're going over to a whole new meter. Now they are a census meter and they're actually, I think they're only about 200 bucks a meter. Oh. Yeah, they're cheaper yeah. than the ones we actually use here. So um, it's not huge, but, and I think we'll bite it off in small chunks. So we're planning on doing the five this year that aren't working next year. We'll maybe take another 10 on uh, order 10 and just see what happens. Mm -hmm. If any start to fail, we'll replace them immediately. If not, then we'll start scheduling people in okay. and just kind of go through a systematic replacement. So um, luckily any of the newer bills down there, whenever they've done rentals, they've been switched over to a new meter. Oh. So, but there is still the existing probably 70 units or something down there that have the old ones. So, okay. Um, and as far as um, Trent Hills assuming operations, it's kind of something that we kicked around like the first kind of year I got here. Mm -hmm. um, other than pumping some water and keeping the pressure up, we really have no control over the system. Um, but yet we're still required under OREG 170 to like complete all the sample. Um, the secondary checks the next mm -hmm. week. So it's it's just a, a thing that we we had discussed with them or like when we when I first started here, mm -hmm. kind of never went anywhere. And it's just something we might broach again just to see if there's um, what kind of costs we'd be looking at for them to basically just assume the operations, um, right. whereas they'd be doing the checks, the sampling, kind of fall under their system, seeing as it's their water. And it's right next door to their water plants. And they're right there. Yeah, absolutely. They're right there. Yeah, yeah. It saves us shooting guys down there. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that kind of stuff. So okay. it's Thank just you. something I think that um, I know there's been a kind of a, a change in guard down there, and they've actually mm -hmm. redone their structure. So there's like uh, there's a new director of public works. There's going to be a new water wastewater operations manager. Mm -hmm. It might be a time we could have that discussion again and see if it's right. as long as it's not cost prohibitive, something we might explore. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Councillor Wall. Uh, thank you for being there. Um, it was a big report, lots to take yes. in as usual. Um, I really liked um, page 141 and 147 of our agenda. Uh, the capital recommendations. It's really nice to see it. Oh, yeah. I, I think that's really great for us as council to see those costs that are coming forward. But another question I had was, um, I see that recertification is coming up this year. There's a five thousand dollars allotment. Yeah. So is that recertification for you, and what level does that give you? No, that's uh, recertification of our um, oh. DWQMS to maintain our accreditation as an operating authority. Right. <clears throat> yeah. So. That's a three-year cycle. So every year we have a, an audit, but every three years, it's kind of more of a comprehensive um, audit where they basically spend a couple of days off site and then a, a day on site with us go over the whole kind of um, thing. And then we maintain our accreditation that way. So so that's what I was referring to. If I can have a follow-up on Go that. ahead, Kat. So do you feel that this is a good time with the new water tower to do that, like, this, uh, like, do you think it all kind of comes in together with the new water tower being put online as well? With regards to the, the uh, audit, yeah, uh, the that's audit. their that's their timing. Yeah. So it's okay. yeah, it's just kind of the way things fell with our very first accreditation. So it's okay. just a three year cycle, and it just happened, and now. it just yeah, okay, yeah, it just happens. Thank you. It fell now. Yeah. yeah. Again, Kyle, very good report. Uh, I'd like to thank you on that. We have a recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Allen Norwood receives this report for information. I have a mover, Councillor War and Councillor Hodgegreaves. All in favor? The motion's carried. Thanks, Back guys. Yes. Seamus McDougall, Manager of Community Center and Parks and Facilities. Request for quotation in Norwood Library replacement. Thank you, through your mayor. So this report is a request for quotation uh, 202402 to replace the Norwood Library roof. Uh, it's currently has tingles. Uh, last year, with a couple of wind storms, we've, we've noticed, and some residents have made comment that it's time to make a change before things get worse. So a recommendation uh, that the council of the Township of Vast for the Norwood receives this report regarding the request for quotation results, the Norwood Library roof replacement for information and further. But the Council of the Township of Aspen and Lord awards RFQ 2024-02 to on-time roofing to install a black steel roof. So uh, we put this request for quotation out for companies took the tender package or the quotation package uh, on the deadline was April 26th at 12.42. Staff opened and we received two. So two of the four submitted them. Uh, after reviewing both submissions, uh, both bidders met all the criteria involved and was set out. 
Uh, the pricing includes removal and disposal of the existing shingles and supply of the new uh, installation, whether it's shingles again or whether it's steel. So again, uh, two submissions were received. Uh, so we broke it down. They had to explain what their quote would be, whether they replaced shingles with shingles or whether they replaced shingles with the steel. So the two companies that uh, bid on this with Northern Exposure and Repairs and On-Time Roofing. Uh, so you can see in the first chart, uh, there is quite a bit of price difference between the two. Uh, so Northern Exposure came in with uh, $20,710 before HST or on-time roofing came in at 9,900 before HST. And then if the next column for the steel, so staff had heard uh, now's the time in the past, we probably would have never even threw at the steel option, but we've heard the price of shingles has gone through the roof. So that's why we threw up both options to see is there much of a difference between the two or maybe the gaps closed. So for the roof, uh, Northern Exposure came in at 40470 and on-time roofing came in at 12600 before HSD. So the financial implications, uh, in the 2024 capital facility budget, 25000 was set aside for two projects, one being the Norwood Library roof and two being the Westwood uh, Accessible Ramp, which last night at the Strategic Management, that was brought up a lot. Uh, so this portion, uh, staff believe this portion of the budget will be satisfactory to cover the costs of the Norwood Library roof and still leave enough money to cover the Westwood ramp. So uh, staff are recommending awarding uh, the library roof replacement RFQ 2024 to O2 to on-time roofing and have them install a, a black steel roof. So the reason we feel that uh, now is the time uh, between the two, there's not much of a price difference. Yes, we're spending a little more, but with steel roofs, you're, it's going to last longer. So you might as well do the change now versus 10 years from now, five years from now, 15 years from now, when the roof needs to be done again, you're not going, oh boy, that 16,000 is now 40,000. So that is why we feel that now's the time to, and again, within, it still meets the 25,000 uh, that's set aside that we can do both projects. Thank you, Seamus. Uh, one question then that's, uh, I don't like the color. For the main reason I've seen more steel roofs that color that peel way before any of the other colors. I don't know why it is, maybe because it attracts the heat. I'll ask you, uh, Ed, is, do you notice that too? With uh, I think you have, you, I think you have bad batches once in a while. Okay, so the, the reason to touch on that through your mayor so when they repainted the outside of the building before I started, it's kind of black and white so. That's, that's why they that's to... to try to keep it uh, that it's not going over oh, where there's a navy green roof or it's not an ice water downtown. <laughs> Although originally it was green. Yes. Well, thank you, Seamus. Does anybody have any other questions of Seamus? Uh, go ahead, Councillor Hodge. Uh, just through you, Mayor, in terms of the timeline for the project, do you have a timeline and will you, and what's the communication plan with the library in terms of? their operational hours during the installation and that sort of okay. thing. So uh, through your mayor, thank you for the uh, question, Councilor Hodge-Green. So uh, in the outline of this, it stated uh, they have to make sure the site is clean. Uh, they have to make sure that they're not disrupting uh, programs. So once we contact the successful bidder, we will let them know this is when the library is open. Obviously, uh, we're fortunate enough that it's not at this time, five days a week. So maybe there's a time where you can be like, hey, you know what? Uh, now's the time to fit in those days. Obviously, we'll make sure they're aware of uh, if they're working on weekends, uh, they're again keeping the site clean and safe for everyone as walking in front of the library is heavily populated, whether you're going to the bank, the hardware store. Uh, so we'll make sure that uh, it's done safely. We'll also make sure that we uh, contact the librarians to make sure that maybe they have a big event coming up that it's like, hey, you know what, let's hold off and maybe you push it a couple of days. Uh, regarding time frame, we'll reach out to them again on that, but uh, I, I would imagine that max a month, if that, obviously, again, Mother Nature will have an impact on that. Is, if it rains, maybe it gets pushed off a bit. Uh, Councillor Wall. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. I, I just had a question about, uh, like, the price differences. Like, there is quite a price mm -hmm. difference in these two quotes. And I was just wondering, so are the materials that are being quoted the same, like the gauge of steel or the warranty on the roof? Like, so are all those things still within, like, the, I guess, the, the quotation? Uh, so through your mayor, uh, good question, Councillor Ward. So they were provided with an outline of 
uh, what needed to be required. So it, it stated if you replace this, you need X amount of steel or X amount of shingles. Uh, I can't state why the difference is. Uh, if, if I were to put out a guess would be, uh, I know some other contractors, everyone's so busy it's that it's, it's, if you hit on this project and can make it worth your while, great. If you don't hit on the project, well, you're busy enough that you're not out of work. But yeah, it, it, it is quite amazing. And that's where, when we kind of had heard about that the price of shingles and steel closed the gap and then to see the one that it's almost double the price. Mm -hmm. So that would be my, I don't know why, maybe they maybe they use a different supplier. Uh, maybe they charge more for their labor. Maybe they there's various unknowns, but I, th I think some bidders again are, if it's going to be worth it, make it worth it, right? Yeah. Versus sure. you're, you're, you're done. COVID obviously slowed some stuff down. And I think some people are now going, hey, if I miss on one project, I still have 15 to make up for it. Yeah. Sure. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilor Walsh. It's one comment to me, Mayor. And I think the other thing with, uh, based on your recommendation, the long time roofing is local. Yeah. We do have experience with them. They've done the town hall shingles. Mm -hmm. A couple of years ago. So we, we do know the, the working ship over there. So. Yep. All right, thank you, Seamus. Uh, I'll now state the recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood receives this report for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood awards RFQ 2024-02 to on-time roofing for installation of a steel lap roof. Moved by Councillor Walsh, second by Deputy Mayor Bird. All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, Thank you. Amos. Moving along, uh, Jordan Webb, Treasurer, Annual Development Charges Summaries. Jordan, please go ahead. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Um, my recommendation is that the Council of Township of Aspital Norwood receives this report regarding the 2023 Annual Development Charge Summary for Information. Um, the background discussion, bylaw 2018-5 Five seven states the treasurer of the township will provide an annual statement to council on or before May 31st of each year for the preceding calendar year for each development charge reserve fund. Development charges fund provides the township with financial resources to address capital improvements that incurred due to growth. Each department is allocated a percentage of the funds collected as per the bylaw. If you refer to the statement that was provided or the table, um, you can see the allocations for 2023, um, we spent about 30,000 on the DC bylaw update, as well 23,000 for the Norman Park picnic shelter. These allocations are partially offset um, by development charge proceeds of 10,000, as well as accrued interest of 17,000. The de uh, development charges collected in 2023 is similar to 2022, um, we're below average. Uh, from the charges we've received in previous years. Um, the development charges are expected to be collected for the beginning of phase four in 2024, which will hopefully replenish the fund. As per the township policy, development charges continue to fund growth related infrastructure. And if you have any questions, I'll take them at this time. Any questions of Jordan? Thank you, Jordan. Uh, very good report. So we recommended motion is that the Council of the Township of Bassdown Down Road receives this report regarding the 2023 annual development charges summary for information. Uh, I have a move it, please. Uh, Councillor War, seconder. Councillor Hodge Greaves, all in favor? Motion's carried. And Jordan, I'll let you carry on with uh, reporting requirement under Ontario Reg. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, this report is a reporting requirement under Ontario Regulation 28409 PSAB, Public Sector Accounting uh, Board. Uh, under this report, we are required uh, to report on amortization, post employment liabilities, and solid waste landfill and post closure expenses that are excluded from our annual budget. The recommendation uh, is that we receive this report for information and further that the Council of the Township of Aspinall Norwood confirms the awareness that future post closure landfills, future employee benefits, and amortization are not included in the 2024 budget. Um, so essentially, you've approved your budget. 
back in November, I believe, for 2024. We're just calling out these items as items that, that weren't budgeted. So the first one is amortization expense. Projected 2024 amortization expenses not included in the budget is approximately $1.6 million, which in theory reflects the annual use of the municipality's assets. Amortization expenses are not budgeted as we use traditional transfers um, to reserves and from reserve funds to replace existing assets and funds are held in these reserve funds and reserve accounts to fund asset replacements. <laughs> uh, later in 2024, I'll bring a report to council requesting uh, any surplus amounts we have from the 2023 budget be transferred into reserves, um, which will assist us in replacing our capital assets. Landfill post-closure expenses. Um, there's a liability for landfill closure and post-closure costs of approximately a million dollars. Um, this has been estimated using discounted future cash flows associated with closure and post-closure care activities for the hospital and Norman landfill sites. This number comes from the auditors. The closure costs include uh, final cover, vegetation, and additional monitoring wells. Post-closure costs include monitoring, maintenance of control systems, and consulting fees for 25 years after the site is closed. So essentially, What's the 25 year cost of us to close the landfill? Uh, in the 2024 budget, there's approximately $350,000 budgeted from reserves for landfill closure costs in 2024. And our current reserve for landfill is about $400,000. Um, we don't have any post employment liabilities. And the cost of the initial closure of the Norwood landfill site has been allocated and reserved for use at time of incurred expense, the ongoing monitoring costs for the Norwood and Asheville sites are included annually in the environmental services operating budget. There's any questions about any of that information? Questions of Jordan? Uh, Deputy Member? Um, thank you, Chair you, Mayor. And I don't know if you can answer this, Jordan. Um, how much longer do we have for monitoring at the Asheville on the sixth line? I can't answer that. Okay, Alan. I just have to think of that. I thought I knew, but I looked for it this now. morning. Sure. God, if you get it's close to that I, I just through, through you, Mayor. Um, what we can do is double check on that, Councillor. Okay. I, I think our general consensus is that we're getting there because of this. So what we we can follow up on that and report back. Okay, thank you. And the ministry may not let you stop at twenty five years no, anyway, correct? Not. I mean, you definitely want to have some conversation with the mayor just to right. confirm that just because we think something is a certain way doesn't necessarily mean the ministry thinks something is a certain way. So right. they do tend to rule on that one. So we yes. really want to have some conversation with them before we make any, we're done with it and we don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Any other questions? No. I'll read the recommended motion that the Council of Township Asset Al Norwood receives this report for information and further that the town the council. The Township of Asheville Norwood confirms the awareness for the future post closure landfill. Future employee benefits amortization are not included in the 2024 budget. Moved by Councillor Walsh. Second by Councillor Hodge Grease. All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. Uh, we're moving along to R5. Uh, merger agreement. Um, I'll call on our chief building official, Ed Whitmore. Yeah, Thank you. For it. Thank you. Through you, Mayor. Report number R5, the merger agreement for the Norwood Agricultural Society property. This and the next report, R6, it's more or less just a simple land swap between the Norwood Agricultural Society and the uh, HBNG Norwood Developments. Incorporated. They're just switching it out to make the lines better and uh, it's mutually agreed upon. Uh, so please uh, accept this report for information and then the recommendation is to have uh, the council authorize the mayor and the clerk to execute the merger agreement between Norwood Agricultural Society, HBNG Norwood Developments Inc and the Corporation of the Township of Asheville and Norwood. There was a consent application uh, B-91-23 
And as a condition of the county approval, this was one of the items. So this will help take care of that. The consent application was submitted to the County of Peterborough Land Division by Nick uh, Stito, HBNG Norwood Developments Inc. on behalf of Norwood Agricultural Society. This was for a simple uh, lot addition and it had an area of about 7.9 acres right behind the community center. The Council of Asphodel and Norwood recommended approval of that consent back last year in November 2023. And then the County of Peterborough Land Division approved that consent this year in February of 2024. And it's subject to rezoning, which is coming up later at a public meeting, and then entering this merger agreement to the satisfaction of the township. We received the uh, merger agreement that you see before you, and uh, we have it on the agenda. And if there's uh, any questions, I'd be happy to uh, answer any of them at this time. Any questions? So when win is the way I look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Ed. I'll read the recommended motion. That the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts this report for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood authorizes the Mayor Clerk to execure, execute a merger agreement between Norwood Agriculture Society, HBNG, Norwood Developments Incorporated, and the Corporation of the Township of Asphodel Norwood. Madam Mover, Deputy Mayor Bird, uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves, all in favor? Motions carried. Ed, I'll let you continue. Okay. Thank you. Through you, <laughs> Report number R6. This is the second merger agreement between uh, HBNG Norwood Developments, Inc. Uh, we uh, bring this to uh, Council for information and further uh, uh, seek uh, the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood authorize the Mayor and the Clerk to execute the attached merger agreement between HBNG Norwood Developments Inc. and Norwood Agricultural Society and the Corporation of the Township of Asphodel Norwood. Purpose of the merger agreement is to satisfy a condition of consent application B 92 23. So the two uh, consents were submitted at the same time and we're bringing the uh, merger agreements at the same time. Application for consent D-9223 was submitted to the County of Peterborough Land Division by HBNG Norwood Developments, Inc. The purpose of the consent application was to create a lot addition. And this is for approximately 7.14 acres and zero road frontage. So they traded the 7.9 acres for 7.14 acres, so pretty much the same amount of land. Mm -hmm. The Council of the Township of Aspidal Norwood recommended the consent approval back in November of 2023. And then the County of Peterborough uh, Land Division, they approved the consent in February of 2024 this year, subject to rezoning entering to a merger agreement satisfaction of the township. May 9th, we received this attached uh, merger agreement. And uh, I'll be happy to answer any questions if there is any at this time. Any questions? All right, I'll read the recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts this report regarding the merger agreement. The HBMG Norwood Developments Incorporated for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood authorizes the Mayor and Clerk to execute a merger agreement between HBNG Norwood Developments Incorporated and Norwood Agriculture Society and the Corporation of the Township of Asphodel Norwood. Have a mover, Councillor War, Councillor Walsh, all in favor? Motions carry. Thank you, Ed. You're welcome. Uh, moving along to R7. Uh, Alan? Thank you, Mayor. Lease agreement. So this is sort of a, a continuation from our last council meeting. 
As you recall, at that council meeting, we made the council aware that we'd had some interest in somebody renting space at the old medical center. So this report basically is updating everybody what's going on with that and looking for council's approval to approve this lease. So there had been a couple of issues that had come up, concerns that had come up with the last meeting. We went back, we, we met with the potential DC to go over some things. What we think brought back is basically what we think is, is a reasonable deal. And I kind of refer back to some of my classes at years ago when it was, if both sides are a little not happy with it, it's probably a good deal. So, you know, are there things I would have liked to see more in there? Yes. Are there things that we see would have liked to probably a little bit different? Yes. But I think we've kind of come together and said, okay, this is what we could both kind of live with. And now we're saying we're just updating council. Uh, I know there have been some concerns around the chili and that piece we did address with a 5% increase in that yearly. And that is something that we will take a look at. It's only a three year lease. And three years is not really a whole lot of time, but well, it sounds like it sometimes it's not. And if there were any issues, there is also a six month out clause on both sides. And if there were any issues, we could give notice before we prepare. So if there are any specific questions, I'll be happy to address those. Any questions? I'll read the recommended motion then that the Council of the Township of Bassadale North accepts, acknowledges, and approves this report, and further that the Council of the Township of Bassadale North would authorize the Mayor and CAO to enter into a facility lease agreement with Casey Fina for a period of three years from June 1st, 2024 to May 31st, May 31st, 2027. Now I have a mover on that, please. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, Councillor Walsh, all in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, Alan. Alan. Jake, before you leave this topic, I just want to provide one other update because, as you will recall, there was another party that was interested in another part of the space, right. but that was not going to be a lease. It was more of a donation on our part to give them the space. So we have had some follow up with them. We do have a space agreement in place for them. I have not brought it to Council because there was no financial component to it. We, did approve it at the last meeting, but I just want to give an update that yes, work has been done on that, and they will be using the space from July to December. Then we'll update council as it goes and see if anything's going to come up that. Okay, thank you. And um, moving along, Alan, we can move along to the management permission list. Yep. So. Just a couple of little pieces here I want to highlight. I think as I said, every time I present this one, we're, we are getting a lot of stuff done. You, you will notice what's been checked off so far. You will notice what we've got this month. Uh, this time I do want to highlight a couple that will be coming up at our next meeting uh, in May. The facilities master plan will be coming to that one. I know that's what we've been waiting on for a little bit, but we will see that one on the May 28th meeting. Uh, we will also have an update on the standpipe and how everything has gone with that. That will be at May 28th. And we will also be bringing an update on the community market and some of the different pieces that are being looked at for that. So those are all coming out on the 28th. On June 11th, we will be bringing a report on the municipal scholarship. So that posting is out there right now. We are having some follow up with the school as, the, as a reminder for them. The applications are until the end of May. If anybody knows anybody who's interested, I would strongly encourage them to apply. And then we will be bringing a report that, of that one. And we have another, well, we have a number of other interesting pieces that will be coming up later this year. But you can see from there, we'll highlight them as we get closer to them. Thank you, Alan. Questions? Go ahead, uh, Councilor Wolf. Yes, thank you for being there. Um, I just had one uh, question about something that, that is coming up. It looks like on June 11th, and I know that some things can be pushed back or changed. It's the Business and Community Recognition Awards. And this is from 2023. And I know that you came in halfway through, basically, you know, uh, the winter time. So uh, I was just wondering, you know, yeah. a thought process on that, because that's 2023 awards. Now we're in 2024. And, um, you know, we were at a, a BAC meeting the other day and there was some recommendations coming from that committee as well. I just wanted to see your thoughts on that. So for you, Mayor, yeah, I, I don't get to think I play my new guy card. Pretty much that one's done now. So this will be one that we will bring you back. There was some discussion at the BAC. 
I do want to have some discussion with some staff and get some a little bit of history and some thoughts. I suspect we're probably going to be looking at a little bit different approach than what we've done in the past, but I also think that a lot of things have changed and we want to best reflect what we can. And if, if we want these awards to have value, then we need a structure and how we're going to do it. So that's what we'll be looking at. You know, and whether that'll be fully fleshed out when we come on the 11th or whether that be here are some options, those are the pieces we're still working on. Yeah. Um, if I may just want to follow up on that, if there had been any um, nomination forms that have been filled out in 2023, um, would would maybe somebody reach out from staff to those people saying the reason why uh, there had been a couple of um, residents had asked that question, and so I just thought maybe well, was we can take that back. I mean, one of the other one of the other things we're also thinking about it, and at some point we're going to want to post something on the Facebook telling everybody what's going on. So we will have to tell the, the beginning of the story. All you, you can't just tell the end of the story. We have to tell the whole story the whole way through. So we'll be looking into it, something like that as well. I appreciate that update. Thank you. Uh, Councilor Walsh. Yeah, through you, Mayor. Uh, I was just regarding uh, on June 25th, the community and fruit signage. I did mention it in my note from Melanie, but yes. um, definitely there's been lots of interest and discussion on that one uh, regarding just town signs. But at the same time, um, we had we used to have a service club signage there as well. So I just want to make sure that kind of gets rolled into as part of that. No, I. I been hearing about signs three years since I first got here that I realized this is an important one for a lot of people. Um, the reason it's on the 25th, and has, I think it did kind of get pumped back, is we have the new public works manager starting mm -hmm. next week, and that'll be one of the topics. He and I start to sit down and wrap up with this what our plan is going to be. Sure. I, from my perspective, I'd sooner as be a little bit later and get it right. So I, did, well, I can appreciate that. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll read the recommended motion that the council accepts this report for the revisions suggested by staff and members of council. Moved by Councillor Ward, second by Councillor Hodge Greaves. All in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. On to the correspondence for action. What's Councillor's wishes with respect to C16 from the Municipality of Trent Hills? Uh, Deputy Mayor Burke? Um, I would make a motion of support, even though it's not directly related to our township. Sure. The county and the city of Peterborough um, fund housing and homelessness, and the cost of that is huge, and it just keeps growing. So I, I think we're all in this. Yes. We're all in this together, and I think we need to support this one. Motion of support, uh, second by Councillor Hodge Greaves. Any further discussion? All in favor? Motions carried. Uh, Township of Amherst. Uh, what's Council's wishes with respect to C-17 operational budget funding? I'll put a motion on the floor if you want, Mayor God, that we receive this one. Okay, uh, motion to receive from Councillor Walsh, seconder. Uh, Councillor War, uh, any discussion? All in favor? Motions carried. Uh, Town of Smith Falls, basic income guarantee. What's Council's wishes with respect to C-18? Uh, Councilor Ward? Thank you, Chief Mayor, to receive this. To receive it. Motion to receive. Seconder uh, by Deputy Mayor Burt. All in favor? Motions carried. Moving along to the City of Guelph, just, uh, decision of the Ontario Energy Board to end the subsidization of fossil fuels. What's council's wishes with respect to C-19? Deputy Mayor Bird? Motion to receive. Seconder, Councillor Walsh. Any discussion? All in favor? That motion is carried. Um, C-20, Municipality of Trent Lakes, Federal Capital Gains Tax. Uh, Councillor War? Uh, to receive um, with comment. Receive with comment. Seconder. Uh, Deputy Mayor Burt. Uh, go ahead, uh, Councillor War. Um, I think uh, capital gains it might be on the uh, minds of a lot of people, especially if they have a secondary dwelling or a cottage. Um, I wanted to uh, 
point out that uh, the OFA has a seminar on capital gains coming up on May 16th, which I, I gave the information to our clerk, Melanie, and she's going to post some information. So if there's any residents that are looking for more information, because I think it is, it's an informational part that people are confused about. So anyways, I just thought I'd mention that this week. Okay, all in favor of that motion? That motion's carried. Thank you. Uh, council ladies on reports. Does anyone have anything else they would like to bring forward? Uh, Deputy Mayor Burke. Uh, thank you, through you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to add to my printed report. We had our um, library board meeting last night, and we have started our next stage of strat planning. And um, we're doing that in house. Last time, a consultant had done that, and this time, um, CEO Trish is taking the lead on that. And we had a workshop last night, and uh, it went very well. And uh, Seamus was there helping lead the way. Alan was introduced to the meeting. And, and uh, I think it was a, a productive meeting between staff and, and the township and or staff and the board. And I think um, we'll be seeing some more information come forward as the you know next couple of months come along. So I'll, I'll keep you um, informed about that because there will be a um, survey coming out and hopefully we can promote that survey to the to the residents. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, Councillor Walsh? Yeah, just to kind of build upon my uh, report that was in the council package uh, from special events. So there's the upcoming. So we have uh, June 1st is Trails Day. Uh, so there will be some activity taking place up at our trail uh, beside the transfer station. Uh, Showcase Aspinall Norwood is on June 15th from 10 till 2. It will be in the, on the arena floor this year. Um, it's coming along great. I think the last one, just want to make everyone aware and thank uh, our group for their feedback. So July 1st is Canada Day. Uh, we have made the decision to not have a full day of activity. Um, just learnings from the last couple of years is people's weekends are really valuable and to try and plan an event for all day, we just it's struggle to get people to come and, and I don't blame them because weekends are valuable. So the alignment that we got among the group uh, is we're gonna have a uh, complimentary pancake breakfast at the town hall in the morning. And by noon, people will be free to attend uh, other local communities. So I know Mayor Wilford had reached out to Havelock, they have events going on from 10 to 11 to long in the afternoon. So come here, have breakfast, go there in the evening, why compete with Trent Hills when it comes to fireworks? They I'm I'm sorry, they do put on the best um, the best show. So in the evening, you can go down and support that local community at the same time. So kind of a little bit of helping each other. And yet we still have something going on in Canada Bay here. Yeah. Very good. Anyone else? Hey, Jack. CAO treasure list. Alan, Mel, or Jordan, do any of you have anything else to bring forward to council? Not here. Okay. Uh, general business, does anyone have anything they would like to discuss? I would just uh, like to thank staff for being out picking up garbage around the community. <laughs> anything that's picked up helps a lot. Um, another thing would be, uh, Alan, I've had... Uh, Emails again from a gentleman down in the Trent View Estates, but you'll have to talk to the new public works uh, manager, and it's to do with poles that are down there that should be removed off lawns that have been down there for two years, but East Link has not moved their lines to the other poles yet. I don't know how you get a timeline with East Link. Maybe their infrastructure can't afford it, is what I was given by one comment. Maybe, I don't know. I can see why the residents are mad. Why I've got that over to me, Mayor. We'll start work on it. See what we can do. Okay, thank you. Uh, we're now going to move in to. What do you want to do? Quickly, have some of that out there. All right. Yeah. Okay. We won't move into full session. We'll take a short recess, and then we have our public meeting at two o'clock and then we'll come back into uh council for the closed session you want a motion motion to make a recess motion uh councillor walsh and councillor hodgkins all in favor motions carried thank you
Welcome everybody. I'll state the time, which is two o'clock. The council has entered into a public meeting to consider two applications to amend comprehensive zoning bylaw number 2009-08. Um, to begin with, I'll ask council members, does anybody have a pecuniary interest to declare at this time? Seeing no hands, we'll move ahead. Uh, may I get a motion to approve today's public meeting agenda as circulated? Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird, Councillor Walsh, all in favor? Motion's carried. And now, now hand the floor over to Ed Whitmore, Chief Building Official of Planning Coordinator. Planning Coordinator. Okay. Thank you, through you, Mayor. Okay, the combined notices of uh, complete application and notice of public meeting concerning the proposed zoning bylaw amendment was circulated in accordance with the Planning Act to all the required agencies and the neighboring area properties within 120 meters of the subject site. The combined notice of complete application and notice of public meeting was also posted on the Township of Asphodel Nora website as well as on the subject site. We'll just go uh, straight to the uh, uh, report R1 for the ZDLA-01-2024 Archer. So the zoning bylaw application is applicable to the lands described as 2319 Asphodel 10th Line, municipal roll number 1501-010-003-196-001. And it's concession 10, it's part lot. 17 in the township of Asphodel, Norwood. The purpose and effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone a portion of the subject lands from the rural RU zone to rural residential RR zone. The retained portion of the subject lands will remain rural RU zone and environmental protection EP zone. The rezoning is required as a condition of consent for Peterborough County Land Division files B-46-23 and B-47-23. And the effect is going to create two new residential lots. Applications for the consent B-46-23, that's lot one, and B-47-23, lot two, they were submitted to the County of Peterborough Land Division by Wilburn and Joyce Archer. The proposed the propose of uh, consent applications B-46-23 and B-47-23 is to create two new residential lots having frontage of approximately 60 meters, which is about 200 feet, and an area of approximately 0 0.46 hectares, which is just over one acre, 1.14 acres. The Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood recommended approval of both consent applications, B-46-23 and B-47-23, in August of uh, 2023. Subsequent to that, the County of Peterborough Land Division approved those both those consent files on October 23rd, 2023, subject to the rezoning of the severed parcels to the satisfaction of the township. No rezoning is required for the retained lands, though both the retained lands will remain rural and environmental protection. So attached to this report is the ap application and the combined notices of uh, complete application and notice of the public meeting. The engagement, as I said before, the uh, Notice has been circulated in accordance with the Planning Act to the required agencies and to the neighboring area properties within 120 meters of the site. The notice was po uh, posted on the Township of Aspen Nord website and also posted on the subject site. Comments from the agencies have been Enbridge Gas have no concerns, Peterborough County Engineering and Design have no concerns, and Oak Orca time your region conservation authority they have no objections so the conclusion if the zoning amendment is passed today it'll be subject to a 20-day appeal period 
And if no appeals are received by 430 on June 3rd, 2024, the zoning bylaw amendment will be final and binding. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Council? All right, I'll also uh, thank you, Ed, for that report. I'll now ask for the meeting record. Are there any persons in attendance to speak in support or offer a opposition of this application? Seeing none, um, I'll go ahead and read the recommended motion for council's consideration that the council of the township of Aspen del Norwood accepts this report regarding ZBLA-01-24 Archer for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood direct staff to prepare a bylaw that will rezone a portion of the subject lands to rural residential RR zone. I've got one, one comment yes. before you do that. Uh, this clause here needs to be read. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at this public meeting or make written submissions to the township of Asphodel Norwood before the bylaw is passed. The person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the township of Asphodel Norwood to the Ontario Land Tribunal. And if the person or public body does not make oral submission at the public meeting or make written submissions to the township of Asphodel Norwood before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to a hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to be notified. And also if a person wishes to be notified of the decision for any and all applications, the, pers the person must make written request to the township of Asheville, Norwood, quoting this file number, ZBLA-01-2024. Thank you, Ed. Um, is there still anybody in the public that wants to speak in favor or against? No? Okay, I did read the motion. Uh, can I have a move? Uh, Deputy Mayor Bird, second by Councillor Ward. All in favor? This motion's carried. Ed, can you please continue on with the second application, please? Yes. Through you, Mayor. This report number R2 is uh, with respect to ZBLA-02-2024, HBNG Norwood Developments, Inc. And again, we, we heard earlier at Council the merger agreement that was applicable to this subject property, and now this is part of that. Okay. Zoning bylaw amendment ZBLA-02-2024 is applicable to the lands located at concession nine, part lot 17 and 18 in the township of Asphodel, Norwood. The purpose and effect of the zoning bylaw amendment is to rezone a portion of the subject lands from residential one exception nine holding, that's an R1-9 bracket H zone, to the institutional zone. The rezoning is required as a condition of consent for Peterborough County Land Division file B-92-23. The effect is to create a lot addition to the existing institutional property. Application for consent B-92-23 was submitted to the County of Peterborough Land Division by HBNG Norwood Developments Inc. for the purpose of the consent application is to create a lot addition by severing a parcel of land, having zero frontage on this road and having an area of approximately 7.14 acres or 2.89 hectares. The Council of the Township of Aspen on Norwood recommended approval of that consent application November 14th of 2023 and then the County of Peterborough Land Division approved this, that consent application February 8th of 2024, subject to rezoning the severed parcel to the satisfaction of the township. The zoning bylaw amendment application is attached and the combined notice of complete application and notice of the public meeting 
was attached to this application. The combined notice of complete application and notice of the public meeting has been circulated in accordance with the Planning Act to the required agencies and to the neighboring area properties within 120 meters of the subject site. The combined notice of complete application and notice of public meeting has been posted on the Township of Asheville Norwood website and also posted on the subject site. We received comments from the agencies. Uh, Enbridge Gas have no objections. Autonomy Region Conservation Authority have no objections and the County of Peterborough Public Works have no objections. One request had been received to speak to uh, the zoning bylaw amendment application. No other phone calls or written comments have been received from any of the circulated residents or any other agencies at the time of writing the report. Um, I'm gonna read those two clauses now mm -hmm. so that we don't miss it. If a person or public body does not make oral submissions at the public meeting or make written submissions to the Township of Asheville, Illinois before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body is not entitled to appeal the decision of the Township of Asphodel Norwood to the Ontario Land Tribunal. If a person or public body does not make oral submission at a public meeting, at this public meeting, or make written submissions to the Township of Asphodel Norwood before the public, before the bylaw is passed, the person or public body may not be added as a party to the hearing of an appeal before the Ontario Land Tribunal, unless in the opinion of the tribunal, there are reasonable grounds to do so. And if a person wishes to be notified of the decision for any or all applications, the person must make written request to the Township of Asheville in order. Quoting file number is NBLA-02-2021-0. And the conclusion, if the zoning bylaw amendment application is passed today, it'll be subject to the 20-day appeal period. And if no appeals are received by 4.30 p.m., June 3rd, 2024, the zoning bylaw amendment will be final and it'll be binding. And I'd be happy to answer any questions at this time. I'll ask again also the meeting record, are there any persons in attendance to speak in support or opposition of this application? Go ahead, sir. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, David McKay, registered professional planner with MHBC representing the applicant uh, in support of the report. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Any questions? Deputy Mayor Bird? Uh, thank you, through you. Um, thank you, Ed, for the report. Just on the on the key maps, um, you have the um, R19 holding, OS5 holding. Can you just review what those mean? With the... so, so back in the day, we went through a long, lengthy process of a zoning bylaw amendment that uh, this property was all going to be a large condominium. And so the R1-9 had a certain size of lots and certain uh, uh, amount of frontage. And then they put an H on the property or we actually installed the H holding provision on the zone, which means you're allowed to use the property as existing, which is like a farm field for crops until the H is removed. And the condition of removing the H is to uh, provide municipal services of uh, water and sanitary services and uh, sewers and storm sewers. So once those are provided or an agreement is entered into properly with securities, then we could remove that H. But that property subsequent to all that happening has been sold and the new proponent is not going the condominium route, is going with uh, 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 diversified uh, residential uses of townhomes, uh, single family dwellings with this size of lot and minimum that size of lot. And that'll be coming forward in the not too distant future. We've already received an application for zoning amendment <clears throat> on phase one, and it'll have a variety of different housing uh, opportunities for people. Good, thank you. I I knew what the age was, but it's just nice to review to review that and yeah. how uh, how those different 
parcels works. Thank you. Um, read. <clears throat> Go ahead. Uh, yeah, screen, and I apologize if I should know this, but so this is the piece of property that earlier in our meeting flipped between the yes, yes. Yeah. So the piece of property that belonged to the agricultural society is institutional zone. Is that correct? Uh, is that going to happen? It may time? actually be a rural zone still. Okay. I'm not sure if we went through the uh, zoning amendment. It was rural, and I think that uh, we, it may actually be a rural exception to allow it to continue for crops because it wasn't to be developed yet. Right. And it wasn't part of this uh, other development. Mm -hmm. And if we put an exception on it to allow it to be a parking lot for the fair board for right. during the Norwood Fair. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, I'll now read the recommended motion that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood accepts this report regarding ZBLA-02-2024 HBNG Norwood Developments Incorporation for information and further that the Council of the Township of Asphodel Norwood direct staff to prepare a bylaw that will rezone a portion of the subject lands to the institutional brackets I zone. Deputy Mayor Bird, can I request report and vote, please? Uh, yes, you can. Report and vote, please. Sorry, I should have given you a heads up. Uh, can I have a little bit of that motion? She moved that way. Second. Second by Councillor Ward. Deputy Mayor Bird? Yes. Councillor Hoshbees? Yes. Councillor Walsh. Yes. Councillor Ward. Yes. Yes. Mayor Lord. Motion is carried. Okay. Thank you. And I'll now ask for a motion to adjourn from the public meeting of May 14th at 217 and resume our regular council meeting. Councillor Walsh, Deputy Mayor Bird, all in favor? Motion is carried. Thank you. back into our regular meeting. We're now going to move into closed session. <laughs> May I get a motion to enter into closed session to receive legal advice that is subject to the solicitor and client privilege, including communications necessary for the purpose in accordance with section 239-2 section F of the Municipal Act 2021 at 217. Uh, Councillor Hodge um Seconder, Council Ward, all in favor, motions carried. Uh, we're now back uh, into open session at 2.48. Uh, we have no notice of motion today, so we will be moving on to the bylaws and I'll ask the clerk to read. Thank Head you, Mayor. you. That the bylaw to adopt the estimates for the sums required during the year 2024 for municipal purposes and to establish rates of taxation to be levied during the year 2024 and to provide for penalty and interest to be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 22. Mover, Councillor War, uh, Councillor Walsh, all in favor? It's carried. Next one. That the bylaw to authorize entering into a merger agreement between HVNG Norwood Developments Inc. and Norwood Agricultural Society and the Corporation of the Township of Aspidal Norwood be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024-23. Uh, moved by Deputy Mayor Bird, second by Councillor Hodge Crees. All in favor? Motions carry. That the bylaw to authorize entering into a merger agreement between Norwood Agricultural Society and HBNG Norwood Developments Inc. and the Corporation of the Township of Aspidal Norwood be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 24. Councillor Walsh, Councillor Ward, all in favor? Motions carry. That the bylaw to authorize the execution of a facility lease agreement between the Corporation of the Township of Aspidal Norwood and Cassifina be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 25. Uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves. Council or Deputy Mayor Burke, all in favor? Carry. 
that the bylaw to amend bylaw number 2009-8 as amended, being a bylaw to regulate the use of land and the use and erection of buildings and structures within the township of Aspidale Norwood, be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024-26. Uh, Deputy Mayor Berg, Councillor Walsh, all in favor? Motion is carried. That the bylaw to amend bylaw number 2009 8 as amended, being a bylaw to regulate the use of land in the use and direction of buildings and structures within the township of Aspidale Norwood, be read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 27. Councillor Ward and Councillor Hodge Greaves, all in favor? And can you carry on with the confirming bylaw? Thank you. That the bylaw to confirm the proceedings at the regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Aspidale Norwood held this date, May 14, 2024. We read a first, second, and third time in number 2024 28. Uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves, seconder, Deputy Mayor Burt, all in favor? Motion is carried. Council, you can see your future meeting schedule and now concludes our business for the day. Is there anybody that wants to say anything about the meeting schedule before I ask for adjournment? All good. Can I have a motion for adjournment then of our meeting on May 14th at 2.51 with the next regular meeting to be held on May 28th for call of the chair. Moved by uh, Councillor Hodge Greaves, second by Deputy Mayor Burke. All in favor? Motion's carried. Thank you, everyone. Productive meeting.